hello, hello, all those beautiful faces. How we doing? How we doing? I'm Miss Edmonds. And I'm Kayla. And it is our pleasure to welcome you to Making History with Miss Edmonds. If there's one thing that I've learned over the past five years of teaching, and really the 30 years I've been alive, it's if you're going to learn it, you got to live it. So come with us and let's make some history. History is all around us. Sometimes it's right in front of us, and sometimes it's hidden by the wrinkles of time. So this right here, this is where it all started. This is the spot where in 1639, right down here, down the Harlem River, Jonas Brunk, a Dutch sailor came. You keep going around the corner, that's where it meets what is now the Bronx River, named after Jonas Bronk. Now, of course, on this land, like much of North America, South America, there was natives here. In this spot, there was the Siwonoi Indians. Jonas Bronk settled right here along the Harlem River in what is today known as the Mott Haven neighborhood. He brought along with him his wife and a few indentured servants, and he bought land from the natives. Now I use air quotes because the concept of buying land was not necessarily the same between Jonas as a European and the natives. So let's dig a little bit more into this history that took place here all those hundreds of years ago. Despite the Bronx being named after Bronx and his tenacity for forging into the unknown land, it was not an unoccupied land, and thus his actual role in history is quite brief, and yet impactful enough that his name is the one for which we use to refer to the Bronx. An ardent intellectual who gave his ship the lofty name Brand Van Trogen, the Fire of Troy, Bronx, his wife, Tuente, and a boatload of eager voyagers traveled to the New World in 1639 and settled on a stretch of land 500 acres across the river from the village of Harlem. With permission from the West Indian Company, Bronk had brought builders, his own cattle, boxes of books, and a desire to create a small community of his own. Spread out through the modern neighborhood of Mott's Haven, Bronx Farm, known at that time as Bronx Land, and those of the other settlers sat along a north-south river called Aquahunk. Bronx grew tobacco and traded with the local Indians, keeping the peace through exchanges of goods. Jonas, however, had arrived at a rather unfortunate time to be a pale blonde foreigner. Relations between the Dutch and the native Indian populations were tenuous at best, and not greatly assisted by hot-headed Director General William Kieft of the port city of New Amsterdam. In 1643, driven by growing animosities and the murder of a single settler, Kieft ordered troops to rout the Lenape populations at Corsair's Hook and the new area known as Jersey City, murdering dozens of Indians and ensuring years of bloody battles between settlers and natives. Bronk was the unfortunate recipient of the native backlash. That same year, 1643, Bronk and most of his settlers were murdered in an Indian raid. Kieft would be swept out of the new world by Peter Stuyvesant. Bronklin would pass into other hands, and just a few years later, the parcel of land would no longer be named for him. Jonas was almost erased from history, except for that rather sizable river that ran through his property, the Aquahunk. Even as memories of Dutch settlers gave way to their British successors, indeed his farm went to two English officers in Cromwell's army, the river was still referred to as Bronx River. Eventually, it was shortened to Bronx River, and thus it is the river that the borough is named after. However, had it kept its original name, given by the local natives, the Lenape, we would be referring to the Bronx instead as Aquahung. How do you think we should remember this history? Can we celebrate both the tenacity of Bronx and remember the sacrifice of the natives who were on this land before him? The only way to find out is to keep making history. Now you may be wondering what the history of the Bronx has to do with global history, which is the course that you'll be taking with me. But 1639, when Jonas Bronx came down this river and bought land here and began what is now what we call home, 
and what's living history all around us, building up, continuing to unfold. We are making history. And 1639 is almost exactly where we pick up in our curriculum. And just like the trajectory of our history, so too is the history of the Bronx. The way that the population changes over time. The technological advancements, the ups, the downs. We are making history.